Hey everybody, William Wallace here with another episode of William Wallace for America on my show. And as you know, I like to find ways to get people informed about what's going on in our state, in our communities, so we can, I guess, take the first step in improving our state and our communities. And I think that's actually the first step in improving our country. So today, I'm bringing on, as you know, uh, I'm traveling around trying to get the, uh, some coverage about the constitutional amendments. And today, I'm bringing on Louisiana State Representative Mike Huval, who's in District 46. Now, before I bring him on and ask him the question about the constitutional amendment, I'd like for you to notice a couple things. That one, we're in the Acadiana delegation uh, uh, meeting room, which is actually in the basement of the state capitol. And you'll notice we got the Acadiana flag here by us, and we're going to have we have a unique picture over above us of, of Acadiana. Take a notice of that, but also notice in our videos that we're being very conscious of the pandemic and very conscious of, of what's going on. So we don't get up close to each other. We keep some distance. We uh, look at uh, we our face at angles, so we're not right in each other's face. And uh, just take notice that we're being very careful about this interview, as we are with all our interviews and what we do. So. Uh, Representative Mike Uval, thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Glad to meet you and glad to be here with you. Well, we've, you've got a constitutional amendment, and I want people to know about all the we got seven of them on this next ballot, and they're all on the downside of the ballot, so people have to drink a lot of coffee yeah, <laughs> to exactly. stay awake yeah. for it. But I want people to know what they're voting for You know, when they, when they go here. Your constitutional amendment is number what? Number two. Okay. Number two on the, on the ballot. And, uh, William, I want to thank you for doing this because— a lot of times people will just not vote for the constitutional amendments because they're not informed about them. So they, they're worried that if I vote yes or no, I'm not sure which way I really want to vote. So I want to thank you for going around the state and visit with the different people that have sponsored these amendments. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for, thank you for that. I appreciate that because, like I said, it's really important that we do know so people will vote on it because our future of our state and the people in it depends on what you know where these go. Absolutely. So yours is number two. Can you give a brief description of what it's what people will see when they go in the voting booth? You know, so they can recognize number two right away, and then tell us a little bit about it. Okay. Well, number two is, is very simple as amendment number two. It's Act Number Three Six Eight. It started out in the House as HB Three Six Zero. And you're the author of that, correct? I, yeah. And I was, and I'm the author of the bill. Uh, it went through the House. Committee, House floor, Senate committee, Senate floor, without any, without any nay votes, uh, unanimous, uh, nonpartisan, bipartisan uh, support. So I want to say that this is a very good bill, and uh, it was brought on with the people on both sides of the table coming together, meaning the tax assessors association and oil and gas. They came together with an agreement. They said that we need to do this. The assessor says what we're using is not really fair. The oil and gas industry says, we agree with that, let's do this. What they were using before was the cost new approach minus depreciation. And was it fair, was it right? Well, they said, well, we think we can do it better. So we're not gonna go there, but let's say we can do it better. So what this will do now, you will, the assessment will be based on the production of the oil and gas well, which the assessors feel is fairer and the oil and gas industry feel is fair. So how was it before? Before. Or how is it right now currently? Currently, this is what the assessor has to use. Whatever the well costs new, minus depreciation. That's, that's, what they, that's what they're telling me they're using. Okay. And they don't feel, they meaning oil and gas and the assessors both agree, they don't feel that this is a fair way of assessing the, the value of the well. Because I guess the, you're, you're, you're assessing it in a new way or new, whereas with, uh, I guess, with, with the production, you have a less value because you've pulled some oil out of the ground, uh, maybe with oil prices being down, and well, the prices are down. Is that a way to look, look at, at it? Look at it this way, William. So once upon a time, a well is producing real well. It's giving many barrels of oil a day. And it continues to produce, but the production starts to lower for whatever reason. So, but you're still assessing it as a as A, a, a cost brand new, new well. Well, cost new minus depreciation. Whereas the new proposed way, if this amendment would pass, says that no matter uh, how old the well is, if it's producing X amount of barrels and that continues through the life of it, it will be assessed that way. But at, in the beginning, if it's producing a high level of barrels, but for whatever reason that starts to go down, 
well, the assessment will go down because there's less income coming in from the well. So they both feel that this is a fairer way of assessing the value. What I like about this, I always come up with these analogies, is it's almost like income tax. If you make more money, you pay more taxes. If you, if you make less money, you pay less taxes. And we're just asking businesses or giving businesses the same opportunity to take advantage of that. So that way, not take advantage in a bad way, but be able to be enticed to come to Louisiana because they know that they're only gonna pay taxes on what they're actually producing and not what you know somebody decides that they're there. You make a very good point. That's a very good point. It'll help, in other words, this will help bring jobs to Louisiana. Exactly, because the all the the, 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 the all and gas well will only be assessed according to the production that it brings to the people that own it. Got it. That's great because, like I said, you know, companies would want to come here if they're getting taxed on valuations that are at market highs when the state's at a market low, for instance. Correct. That's a great. I, see, that's what I, I like the forward thinking of some of our representatives, like Representative Huval, to be able to uh, find ways to bring jobs into Louisiana. There's all kinds of ways, and this is just just one of them. So, what gave you the idea for this? Okay. Well, that's that's a, that's an interesting question. So Ricky Huval was the tax assessor in Iberia, Paris at the time, and Ricky and I are distant related, and we're good friends. So many times when there are bills for the Assessors Association or one for his particular parish, he will call me and say, Mike, I have a bill for you to carry. Would you carry it? Sure. So Ricky calls me and says, Mike, I have this bill for you to carry. He said, would you be interested? I said, sure, but tell me a little bit about it. He says, well, this is a bill that is it's an agreement between the Tax Assessors Association and all industry. I said, uh, he, he caught me in the shock. He said, so, Ricky, I said, there's a bill that y'all are proposing that both the assessors and all the industry agree to? He said, yes. I said, that's interesting. I said, I believe you, Ricky, but I said, would you mind if I call a representative with the oil and gas industry just to see, make sure that we all on, uh, on the same page? He says, absolutely, call them. So I called uh, a representative of the oil and gas industry. He's, uh, he's, he was uh, the executive director for one of the, the organizations. And I spoke to him. I said, okay, a good friend of mine, Ricky Huval, calls me, says that industry, meaning oil and gas, is in agreement to a bill that they want to propose that affects the, the assessment of oil and gas producing well. He says, yes. He said, we're all on board. I said, you're all on board. He says, I will, this is what I will do, Mike. I will send you a memorandum to show that the Tax Assessors Association and the two oil and gas industries, that being Loga and Lamoga, are in agreement to this uh, bill. I said, well, that's great. I said, send that to me. Because I believed everybody. I trust them like the days long. Right. But I wanted to make certain because right. they, when I, they were debating. Arguing is not a good word because they weren't arguing. They were debating about how we need to change this. So finally, they have, they came, after many decades, as they tell me, they finally came to the table and says, this is what we need to do. So, and you'd be amazed, William, that even after I get the proof from Ricky, Lamoga, Loga, that we offer this, many of my, my fellow representatives and senators says, Hugh Paul, are you sure that everybody is in agreement with this? I said, well, here's the memorandum. Hey. Everybody's name is <laughs> on the top. He says, that is great. So that's how it started, and that's what helped to get this bill, which is now Act 368, to pass through the whole process basically untouched as far as the negative vote. So it started in the House, it goes to the Senate, we get an approval in the Senate on it. It's a nag, but it has to be passed by the people. It's a constitutional well, amendment. Then it goes to the Secretary of State, right. and then he gets it on the ballot right. to be able to make it a constitutional amendment. Right. So that, that's, that's, that's the path that this took. So what I like about this is not only do you have the oil, so, so you have a, I guess, the, I don't want to say the trifecta, but what the, the, to magnify how good this is, you know, you got Republicans and Democrats. You said bipartisan. Bipartisan. That, that so was, both Republicans and Democrats and are independents on board with, and independents. So you've got everybody on board with it. Now all we need to do is put it in front of the people in November and get them to vote on it. And I think that this, this, the people, what they say, well, how does this affect me? You know, how does oil and gas assessment affect me? We can say that affects them. That it helps bring industry to Louisiana and shows actually even other industries outside of oil and gas that Louisiana is making positive uh, statements in, in ways that are, we want to attract businesses. Well, they need to realize that it's industry friendly. The oil and gas industry is very important to our state. They want it, they agree to it. If, if it's a good thing, you know, if you're in Louisiana, you may not have a job in the oil industry, 
You may not have anybody in your family that's in the oil industry, but I know that you have friends or their friends are in the oil industry. So we want to do everything we can to help the oil and gas industry, whatever way we can. So if this will help. It's not a magic, uh, it's not magic dust, it's not a silver bullet, but it will help. And we want to do everything we can to try to help our oil and gas industry. So is a vote for it, against it, or is a vote for it, for it? I'm asking that question because you go into the voting booth and you don't know if you're voting for something or voting against it with whatever. So is a vote for it actually for it, or how is that? The vote for it is what is the way that we're asking people to vote because that's what's pro for the oil and gas industry and also good for the, the assessors association that's what they want also if you vote against it you just we're just going to continue having what we have now which both the taxes assessors association and oil and gas feel is an unfair way of assessing the oil and gas producing wells so you're not going to necessarily hurt but you're not going to help so this is an amendment that will actually help the oil and gas industry so we're trying to help them and the Assessors Association, they say it will help them too because they, they feel they will give a fairer assessment of the property where the oil and gas well is located. So vote for it is a vote for jobs. Correct. For a vote for Louisiana and a vote for the oil and gas industry and the assessors. Everybody agrees. Everybody's on board on this one, uh, William. I don't know. I haven't heard anybody come to me and say, Mike, I, I'm, I'm against this. No, that hasn't happened yet. Tomorrow's another day. That could happen. But today and, and before today, nobody has said they're against this. So... Again, I really do thank you for doing this because many people just don't realize how important sometimes a constitutional amendment is. And because they're uninformed, many times they just don't vote for it. So the more people like yourself, the more, more organizations like yourself that do this, the better informed the public can be about what these amendments could do for us. It's about our future. Absolutely. And that's what I'm trying to make it. Do you have another second to ask you a little bit about your district? Absolutely. I, I'd, love to, I'd love for the people in the audience to know about your district and where, where is your district exactly? Where are the, kind of the boundaries? Well, I'm going to say it's probably in the heart of a, what I call Acadiana. Uh, as you can tell in my accent, I'm Cajun. Uh, my district uh, pretty much follows uh, Bayou Tesh. It starts in the north at a small community called Leonville, continues down south, and it ends up in another little small community called Lorville. So what I go by is I tell people that my district is District 46, and I go from Leonville to Lorville. Uh, it's very, Along the Tesh. Along the Tesh. <laughs> you know, it, it, there are some outskirts, but it pretty much follows the Tesh. Uh, it's a very rural district. You know, there are some towns in my, com in, in my district. Uh, you know, like I said, there's, there's Leonville, there's Orneville, there's the community of Cecilia, there's the town of Henderson, there's Brobridge, there's Parks. And there's Leonville, and there's, you know, there's a half part of San Marcos. So even though there's cities and towns, I still consider it very rural. Uh, so, but, you know, it, what's good about my district is basically all rural. So it's people that can relate to each other mm -hmm. in many ways when you serve them. It's interesting because a lot of the representatives have multiple parishes, multiple towns. And since the district is based on population, uh, you know, that population, to get that number of population, you could be across many towns or many parishes. And in some cases, you know, you might get a concentration like the, the people in Jefferson Parish, represent Jefferson Parish, you know, they got, you know, small land masses because mm -hmm. there's so many people living in there. So it's just a different perspective. Right. So we get that, that, that different perspective for everybody. Uh, what made you run for office? Well, actually, I served in local government for about for, uh, over 15 years. And so I served local government. Um, I was in the last year of my final term. And I hadn't planned to run for anything else, but then my good friend, Senator, now Senator Mills, was a state representative, and he ran for an open seat in the Senate that he won. So it just by chance, by Senator Mills becoming Senator Mills in an open seat in the House of Representatives, I ran for that. There was one year left in, in his term, so I served for one year. And fortunately, since then, I've, uh, I've, I've served. This will be my 10th year serving. Awesome. What are, you, what are you most passionate about? Well, that's, that's the last question, by the way. <laughs> Uh, actually, uh, what I try to do, uh, William, is to serve the, the, my district in whatever way I can. Uh, I've served on different committees. Agriculture was one because, I know I've, as, you, as I told you, it's, it's very much in my district. Uh, my background is insurance, so I've done whatever I could to try to help the industry, which in turn to try to help the people in our state to get lower insurance rates. Uh, I've served in uh, civil law, and even though I'm not an attorney, me and the now speaker Clay Schechtsnyder and uh, Jeff Arnold, we served them there. We were the only non-attorneys, 
But I have to tell you that, you know, even though we're not attorneys, we brought something to the table that the attorney said, you know, Mike, we may not agree with what y'all say, but as business people, y'all bring something different to the, to different the table. Different perspective. Exactly. So, uh, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've, it's been an honor serving here. This is my last term because we have term limits in our state, as you well know. Mm -hmm. So I've enjoyed that. Uh, I've enjoyed serving the people of my district, very good people. I've done, the, uh, you know, tried to serve them all to the best of my ability. Well, thank you very much for your, for your service, and thank you very much for what you're doing for our community, but thank you very much for this amendment. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, amendment number two, vote for it if you can from uh, your suggestion, and I think uh, everybody should take a good look at it because everybody's on board with it, and keep an eye out for, for the results. Mike, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Good meeting you, and uh, good speaking with you, William. Thank you very much. Everybody else, please, if you know somebody, and of course I'm joking a little bit here, if you know somebody who's voting in November, Please share this video with them. Sharing it's not a joke. Voting it is not a joke. But the idea that I'd like for you to share it with somebody who is voting, it's not going to be hard to find somebody who's voting. And I think that all of these amendments that we're covering on the show at William Wallace for America are very important for the people of Louisiana to get to know. Thank you so much for your time.